By watching this series, you'll learn how to use MetaTrader like professional traders do. I'm going to teach you everything from the basics to advanced use. TradeRoomPlus.com so I'm going to be showing you on a simple step-by-step -step basis how to use MT4 like a professional. That's going to be everything from keyboard shortcuts to understanding what each section of the platform means to more advanced things like applying technical analysis, back testing, placing orders, and lots and lots more. So let's begin. Now MT4 can be used on desktop or mobile. So if there's any specific video you want to have a look at in this series, you can have a look in the description below and jump to anything that takes your fancy. If you're a more advanced user, you might want to have a look at the series uh, further along, for example. Now, if you're just new to MT4 and you open it, then it can look quite intimidating. You open the platform, it looks like quite an advanced bit of software, and that's because it is. You know, you have your file view, insert charts, tools, windows, and help up here. You've got all these buttons down here. You've got your charts, you've got your trading instruments to the left hand side. You have all your tabs down to the uh, bottom, you know, alerts, mailbox, market articles, and it can all be quite overwhelming. But like any advanced bit of software you want to learn, whether that's anything to do with trading or something with Photoshop, for example, then you want to break it down into different compartments and take it on a step by step basis. And that's exactly what we're going to do. In order for us to access the full features of MT4, we're going to need to log into it, which is what we're going to look at in a moment. However, in order to do that, you need an account. At this stage, I would recommend you open a demo account. That way, if you make an error, you place a trade, for example, it's not going to cost you any real money. Now, there are hundreds of brokers across the world that provide MT4. Now, selecting a broker is a bit of a skill in itself. You've got to understand things like licensing and regulation, whether your money is separated, spreads, executions, deposits, withdrawals, etc., etc. Now, there are a lot of brokers who I see people use who I would never trust my money with. Every broker that we use that has MT4, we have live accounts and we have tested and trust them with quite large accounts for them all, in fact. Now, you can find the brokers that we would recommend for you to open your demo account with by clicking on this card just above my finger and it will take you to our website. And once you open that demo account, you'll be able to log in with us and access the full features of MT4 to begin your learning. Once you have your logon information, if you've had any issues with that, then contact the broker's support, and I'm sure they'll be happy to help you get that. There are two ways to log on. Now, the first way is looking in this bottom right-hand corner. Now, you can see here where it says we have no connection and has some red bars. Now, that means we're not logged into our account. So you can click that and have a look at this pop-up here and log into it. But the more common way to do it is to go to the top left where it says File. Now, once you've selected file, you scroll down to log into trading account. You click that, and then it brings up the MetaTrader 4 terminal. Now, you put in your login information in the login. You obviously enter your password, and then you make sure you select the correct server. Now, you can see here we need to select Trade Tech Markets Practice, and you can also select Save Account Information to save you messing around doing it in future. Now, once we've done that, we select Login. And after a while, you'll see everything come to life. You can see in the bottom right hand corner, we have green bars instead and data transfer. And we also have these deal tickets come up. Now, your broker may look slightly different to this, but essentially you're going to start seeing the charts come alive. You're going to see flashes as the price changes. And you're also going to get a couple more options in this bottom left, which are basically showing you what your demo account stands at in terms of uh, the theoretical money that you have to trade with. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but lots of tutorial videos make me lose the will to live because I either spend too much time on things that you're never going to use or things that are so basic and obvious it can be covered once and in about 10 seconds. I'm not going to be spending two minutes teaching you how to draw a vertical line on a chart. So basic things that you should be able to grasp straight away are going to be covered very quickly. So let's have a look around the platform and have a look at some sections to begin to get an understanding of it. Now, at the top, we have our drop down menus. We have file, view, insert, charts, tools, window, and help. Starting with file, the only thing you really need to know at the moment is how to log into your account, which we've already done. I wouldn't worry about anything else at the moment. Now, view is quite important. You can change your uh, languages if uh, English isn't your first language. Obviously, a huge range of languages there, so I'm sure you'll be able to find which one you prefer. Now, if you come down here, you have a shortcuts for the main window. You've got market watch, data window, navigator, terminal, strategy tester. You also have the keyboard shortcuts as well. Now, whether you want to learn those or not is up to you. It's not uh, 
as comprehensive as something like Photoshop, where you've got hundreds of keyboard shortcuts. So, you know, it shouldn't take you too long to learn those. Now, view's quite important as well, because inevitably you will do something like close your market watch tab and you'll want to know where you can get it back. So you can either press Control or M, or you can come to View and just select it there. Insert deals with um, your indicators. If you want to apply technical analysis to the chart, you can see they're all here. The most popular ones are at the top, and then you've got lots and lots to select from here. We'll be having a look at those in a later series, lots of custom ones, and you can also load custom indicators into MT4 as well if they're not on that list. Again, something I'll be showing you later on. Then you have your lines, your vertical horizontal trend lines, channels for Fibonacci and other ones, GAN lines, Fibonacci on its own, shapes to put on your charts such as rectangles, arrows, triangles if you want to sort of define a wedge for example, and arrows as well. Now a good thing about MT4 is you can annotate your charts quite heavily, you can add text on them as well as you can see here text text label so you can have quite uh, detailed charts you know you're going to get out of these charts what you put in so again we'll have a look at that later when we look at charting but there's a whole host of options you can use so if you're finding this series helpful and you want to learn more about becoming a professional and profitable trader then please subscribe to our channel by clicking this button just below my finger you can then go to your chart list as well and select bar chart candlesticks line charts i mean pretty much everyone uses candlesticks that's exactly what i'll be using um, so you can select that now. Um, you've got your different time frames, one minute, five minute, 15 minute, 30 an hourly, four hour, daily, weekly, monthly, etc. And then you can have different templates as well. We'll look at templates in a bit more detail later on. You can have a grid on, volumes, shift your chart as well, zoom in, zoom out. So lots and lots of different things as well. Tools won't worry about too much at the moment. Uh, window, you can just look at uh, different arrangements. For example, if you want to cascade your charts like that, you can do it. I don't know why you'd want to do that, it looks stupid. You can tile your charts just as we were doing there. Um, you can tile them vertically. So you get different little setups there on your window. And help, I wouldn't worry about. I've cascaded again like an idiot. Help, I wouldn't worry about too much at the moment. Tile windows, that's the one I want. Help, I wouldn't worry about too much at the moment. I would ignore that. So that is the uh, drop down menus that you can see here. Now, moving on, we then have these subsections here, which are basically just shortcuts to the drop down menus. We can create a new chart throughout a range of different instruments or Forex at the moment, but we can arrange that differently. So if you want a new chart, for example, on the dollar Swiss franc, we can open that there. It becomes a blank chart and then we can uh, get rid of that and not worry about it anymore. Um, we also have shortcuts for our profiles, don't need to worry about that at the moment. Um, now this brings up our data window, again it's just a shortcut from the view section so we're not too bothered about that. And again these are all just pretty much shortcuts of the view section here that you can see. By, these are basically called context menus I believe. Um, that's a back testing one as well there. So just fiddle around with all these at the moment and just see what they do. Take a bit of time just to press these different buttons in these sections. Have a look at uh, your insert menus and have a look at what they do. We don't need to worry about placing a new order at the moment. In fact, it's not even on the right screen. I'll drag it to the right screen, but we'll have a look at that in more detail later. And then we have some ones that we don't need to really worry about at the moment. This one is quotes, register as a virtual server, register as a signal account, enable automated trading, etc. Um, ones that you will be using quite a bit are changing these. Just change them all to candlesticks. I mean, I never ever use uh, candlesticks. Another thing I always do is get rid of the grid as well. So you could right click on a chart and you can get rid of a, this grid. I always find it pretty distracting. Or on your keyboard shortcut, you can press Control and G and that gets rid of the grid as well. I find the grid pretty distracting. So I will always get rid of that and from now on you won't see it with a grid. You can zoom into charts and zoom out to charts and this is just a shortcut to tile. Now these two are quite interested as well so if you have a chart for example and you end up scrolling back and you want to get back to the uh, latest tick you can just click that one here scroll to the chart at the end of the incoming tick and if you want a bit of a gap uh, towards the right hand side of the chart then you can click this one it gives you that there um, so it just gives you a little bit of room to work that's how i tend to have my chart set up so i'll go through them all i'll generally um, add that one there as well so your chart starts looking to take shape and start looking a little bit more neat now here we just have basic crosshairs and cursors if we want to uh, highlight something and drag it have a look at its value etc etc 
Then we have our line, so you can draw vertical lines or horizontal lines or angled lines on the chart. In fact, I'll make that chart a little bit bigger. You can make charts bigger and smaller by these pretty standard maximize and minimize boxes. I ain't going to show you how to use those. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to. Uh, you can pull Fibonacci retracements and things like that using this. Or we can add text labels and things like that to start annotating our charts so again not going to go into too much detail about charts at the moment because we're going to have a look at that a little bit later now again while staying in a particular chart um, any chart that you are highlighting um, will be the one that is affected by the actions that you take so for example i've highlighted this uh, dollar swiss chart and this is the time frame box here so i can change it from one minute to five minute to 15 minute 30 etc etc so different time frames in that respect so just again have a little play around of all these things your drop down menus and all these shortcuts here get a feel for them they're uh, pretty simple now moving on here we have this market watch box which is where we can place all the different things that we want to trade um, and if we right click on those we could potentially place orders on there. The shortcut is F9, so that's pretty much the main thing we need to take from there. The two things from this uh, context menu are the new order that we can place with F9, so we can place an order, or we can get a new chart if we want to assess that market. So continuing to look at the market watch section, we'll just expand it out a tiny bit. You may say to me, Simon, I hate all those instruments. I hate the dollar yen especially. I lost all my money on that piece of crap. How can I trade something I actually like and can make money on? Well, don't fear, because there are two ways you can do that. You can either right click and select symbol, or you can press control and U. And then that will bring up all the available instruments with this particular broker, whether you want to trade the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which I'd recommend you do because it is a gold mine for money. Or if you literally want to trade gold, then you could go to metals, for example, and click gold here. And then you can do all the usual things on those. You can right click and uh, create an order. You can right click and create a chart, etc., etc. So just remember that right click symbols if you don't see what you want to trade already. So you now know how to log into your MT4 account and you also know how to navigate yourself around the platform. Now that provides the foundation for us to look at more exciting and more advanced aspects of MT4. So what you need to do now is click the next video in this series.